Welcome to the F-Bomb Podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Schroeder, Executive Function Coach. I help neurodivergent women learn tips and strategies to improve the life skills that will help them be successful. Staying organized when you're busy. Staying organized can be tough for anyone, especially if you struggle with executive functioning. However, when life gets busy, trying to stay on top of everything can be overwhelming. In this guide for organization for busy people, we'll look at some simple strategies to keep you on track so you can feel more in control of your schedule. Prioritizing tasks. The first step in staying organized when you're busy is being able to prioritize your tasks. You need to focus on things that are both urgent and important because they will have the greatest impact on your day. When you have a lot on your plate, you'll get overwhelmed if you try to do everything at once. We think we can multitask, but it's actually pretty ineffective. You feel spread thin, and you're not able to accomplish as much as you think you are. Sure, you'll have a bunch of tasks started, but very few will be complete. Prioritizing your tasks will help you focus on the things that matter most so that you can be more efficient. How do you prioritize? Some of you can probably guess what I'm going to say. Start with a planner. You need to be able to track and see everything that has to get done in order to prioritize effectively. If you don't know what should be on your to-do list, something will fall through the cracks. Prioritization tools. Eisenhower matrix or Covey quadrants. Evaluate the tasks based on importance and urgency. Things in quadrant one are both urgent and important, like your baby crying. Quadrant two has things that are important but not urgent. Things that have to get done, but it doesn't have to be right now. Quadrant three is urgent but not important, like email and text notifications or things that pop up and you need you need to handle something about them right now, but they're not really important. And quadrant four is for the things that are not important nor urgent. These are time was- wasters, but tend to be a lot of fun. The one, three, five rule. Look at the tasks you need to complete and choose one big task, three medium tasks, and five small tasks to complete each day. Using this method is beneficial for people who have attention problems or chronic health issues. Do your one big task when you have the energy to do so. The medium and small tasks usually require less bandwidth to complete and can be spread throughout the day, like after a nap. ABC method. Put each task into an appropriate category. A, things that have to be done. B, things that should be done. C, things that would be nice to get done. The Moscow method. Organize tasks into groups. Must do, should do, could do, won't do or wish to do, depending on how you want to look at that W. Like with all methods, focus on the must do or the most important tasks first. Regardless of which method you choose to help you prioritize, you want to focus on the items that will have the biggest impact on your life. So then when it comes to organization, you have to ask yourself, what will change how I feel in this space? Or how can I reduce the chaos in my life? Breaking down large tasks. When you are trying to organize your space and your life while working and raising a family, it's paramount to take those big jobs and break them down into manageable steps. If you just put clean out garage on your to-do list, it might never get done. You know it's going to take many hours to clear out and sort through everything in the garage. And who the hell has 12 extra uninterrupted hours to do this? However, if you break this job down into smaller tasks, maybe jobs that can be done in 30 minutes or so, you can start to make headway on the big job. It might take you longer to complete the job, but you'll at least be making progress, which is more than what happens when you simply move that job from one week to the next on your to-do list. Breaking tasks down makes them feel more manageable. As you see progress being made, you'll feel motivated to continue. The task is no longer overwhelming. Tools for breaking down tasks. There are a bunch of different apps that you can use. Todoist, Trello, and Asana are all apps or programs you can use to list out all the subtasks or steps needed to complete a larger task. So if you like to work with technology, play around with some of those. Most of them, I think, have a free version or a free trial that you can play with. Mind mapping software. If you're a visual person, a mind map might help make sense of those big jobs. MindNote and XMind are both mind mapping programs you can try. Workflow diagrams. Lucid Chart is a workflow diagram that can help you, uh, they can give you a visual of the steps you need to take in the process of completing large tasks. You can also use Lucid Chart to create a Gantt chart. Checklist. If you're old school like me, you can just create a checklist of the steps you need to complete and mark them off as you do them. 
And for many people, actually checking things off the list or when you're in Trello or Asana, you can move things around and, you know, check them from the to do to the finished or completed list. It gives you that little bit of dopamine hit. It's like, it's a win, almost like you've gotten to the next level of a game. It seems silly and it's something small, but it works and it engages your brain and then you want to do more. Time management techniques. In order to be able to organize everything in your life, you need to be able to manage your time. If you can manage your time effectively, you will be more productive and have time to do the things that really matter to you. The Pomodoro Technique. To use the technique, you split your work into 25 minute intervals followed by a five minute break. After every fourth Pomodoro interval, you take a longer break. For my clients who can't focus for 25 minutes on a task, I suggest altering those intervals to make them work for you. So your Pomodoros might only be 15 minutes. Regardless of what your time chunk is, you really do need to use a timer because you will either fall down the rabbit hole of work and work for way more than your 15 or 25 minute time chunk, or it will be a task that you hate so much that your break is longer than the five minutes it should be. Time blocking. Time blocking is most useful when you know what your peak times of day are for being productive. You break your day into chunks of time, dedicating a specific amount of time for each task. When you schedule your day, you block out your most productive times for your most important tasks. Eat the frog or worst first. This technique is useful if you tend to procrastinate doing the things you don't want or don't like to do. If you get the worst things done first, then it's not hanging over your head and you will immediately feel a sense of accomplishment. I often use worst first when I'm working with um, students who have homework. So let's say they hate doing math, have them do the math first. That way it's done, it's off the list, and it's not hanging over their head, nagging at them like you still have to do the math, you still have to do the math. And it works the same way for adults. If there's a task that you don't want to do, if you start that first, it will be done and off the list. 80-20 rule. This technique is about giving your attention to the 20% of tasks on your list that will give you an 80% return. You want to put your focus where you'll get the most bang for your buck. Buck. It's important to note that the 20% might depend on what else you have going on and what areas of your life are struggling with most. So that 20% might be work some days, other days it may be home life, family, something around the house. So that 20% is always going to vary depending on what you need to get done. Batching. I love batching. This technique involves completing a set of similar tasks all at once. For me, I will sit down and draft a month's worth of blog posts and then let them sit in draft mode. And then I go back in and just add the pictures and the links and things like that. Batching works because you don't have to switch context. It's useful for people who tend to hyperfixate because it allows you to stay in the zone of one thing without flipping back and forth to do lots of other different parts. Minimizing distractions. We live in a world where there are constant distractions. If you have executive dysfunction, you are probably more prone to be distracted. Learning to minimize distractions is vital if you want to be more organized and more productive. Turn off notifications. Seriously, do you really need things to pop up on your phone and computer screen? Sometimes with an accompanying ping? For some of you, the answer is yes. You need that notification so you remember to take your meds or pick your kids up from school on time. But I'm talking about the incessant social media and text notifications. You don't need them. They tempt you to waste time. Use headphones. Again, not everyone can do this. If you have small children, completely drowning them out probably isn't a good idea, although it might be tempting. But they can help you stay on track because you're not distracted by other people and noises going on around you. Take breaks. This might seem counterintuitive, but running nonstop is not healthy and will lead to burnout. Taking regular breaks is important to keep, to keep yourself on track. If you start to burn out, you will not only be less focused, you will be less productive. Use website blockers. If you are easily distracted by social media and other engaging sites when you should be working, consider using a blocker that will prevent you from visiting those sites while you're working. The Freedom app is one that you can take a look at. Stop multitasking. For a lot of years, everyone was all about multitasking. They would talk about how you can get so much done. In reality, though, multitasking tends to be much less productive. You will have a bunch of things started, but nothing finished. Multitasking is fine when the tasks don't require a lot of brain power, laundry, dishes, etc. But when you need to focus on work, you don't want to divide your focus. Review and reflect. 
When you, whenever you are working to improve your organization and productivity, it's important to review and reflect on your progress. Self-monitoring is another executive function skill that helps here. Since self-monitoring might not be a strength of yours, here are some questions to help you reflect on how well your progress is going. What did I accomplish this week or month? And how does it compare to my goals? What tasks or projects took up the most time and were they worth it? Did I use my time effectively, or were there moments where I wasted time on unimportant tasks? Did I experience any challenges or obstacles that hindered my progress? How did I overcome them? Did I take breaks and practice self-care when needed, or did I push myself too hard? Did I prioritize my most important tasks, or did I get sidetracked by less important tasks? Did I use any time management or organization techniques that worked particularly well? If not, what could I try next time? Did I collaborate effectively with others, or were there any communication breakdowns that slowed me down? How did my mood and mindset affect my productivity and organization? What can I do to maintain a positive mindset? How can I apply what I've learned from my reflection to improve my productivity and organization in the future? Those are 10 questions that you can use repeatedly, daily, weekly, monthly, to help improve all of these skills. Staying organized is extra challenging when you're busy. However, staying organized is key to achieving your goals and minimizing stress in your life. Give some of the techniques and tips here a chance to help improve your ability to stay organized no matter how hectic life gets. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the F-Bomb podcast. Thank you for listening. Remember to subscribe below and check out my show notes to learn more about my Facebook group, courses, and membership. (laughs) 